Hello everyone. So today we'll talk about 5G coverage expansion. Now 5G coverage expansion is a hot topic. Everyone wants to increase their 5G coverage, increase their 5G footprint and uh, there are many ways to do that but some of the most important part, the most important point would be the concept of decoupling. So what does it do and how it works? Let's have a look at it. Now before we go into decoupling, uh, we need to ensure that we understand the 5G NSA architecture that's not standalone. I've already done a video on that but let me quickly recap it for this video as well. So in NSA what we do is that uh, the LTE needs to be there to support 5G. 5G cannot exist on its own. So how it looks like, a user will always have the control channel on LTE, the control plane on LTE. So the RRC plane will be here, while the user plane can be on both LTE and 5G. So we have user plane on 5G, but there is no control plane, this dotted line, while the control plane is only on LTE. So any control data will go through this portion while all the user data can come through this portion, this leg. So um, now let's see um, how a typical 5G and NSA network looks like. So we we'll, we have this 5G node which has uh, you, which is used with LTE. So right now LTE has a bigger footprint because it's a mature uh, mature network, it's a mature technology. So we can say that LTE has a much bigger coverage, much uh, bigger footprint while 5G is mostly being added as a capacity layer so what it does is that it will have a lower footprint right and it's still it's gonna be patchy for a long long time until we have carpet coverage of 5G so now what it looks like over here this UE is there it has 5G coverage so it is this bl dark blue uh, circle has this 5G coverage that means it is having 5G in downlink and 5G in uplink so data is going through 5G and we can say it's a happy happy customer. So what it will look like over here, so the data is coming from the core to the 5G node B in downlink and then from the 5G G node B is going to the UE. Similarly in uplink, the user is sending data to the 5G G node B and then the G node B is sending the data to the, L, to the core. So this is how it will look like. Now what will happen when the user moves away from the area and it goes over here? Now over here we can say that still the 5G downlink coverage is present but the uplink coverage is limited. Now why is that? Because again uh, the downlink has much more power, it is on a higher height, it has better link budget so the downlink coverage will still continue while the uplink coverage because the UE is going to have lesser power it will be more power limited so there is a higher chance that uplink coverage will be gone before the downlink coverage. So in this portion where we have the light blue uh, radius, we can say that 5G downlink coverage is present but uplink coverage is not there. So what it will do is that it will look like this over here. We have downlink data but uplink data will not be able to reach the G node B because there is uh, an uplink coverage limitation and most probably the UE will have an RLF, a radio link failure and when the UE has a drop on 5G NSA network it will go to LTE. So it will move to LTE. So what we can do here is that we can leverage the architecture of non-standalone mode and we can use that to our advantage in such a way that we can keep the downlink on 5G but we shift the uplink to LTE. Now when we do that what will happen is that the downlink stays on 5G so any downlink data it comes to the 5G node and it goes to the 5G air interface to the uh, UE while in uplink the UE will not send data here but it will use this path. It will send uplink data towards the LTE E node B then LTE E node B will send that over the X2 interface to 5G G node B and then the 5G G node B will send that data to the core. So the downlink traffic will come like this the uplink traffic will go like this. So effectively what we have done here is that we have increased our 5G coverage from this portion to this portion and we have maintained downlink data on, on 5G and which is the most important part because the in the, our main capacity that we add in 5G is for the downlink. So we keep the data for downlink on 5G and uplink we send uh, into LTE and in, in that case we have improved our 5G coverage. So as an example let's say if a user is watching YouTube 
it is gonna get YouTube data on this one right and it will send the acknowledgements that it needs to send in uplink start sending over LTE so the TCP acknowledgements will go over LTE while let's say the TCP data it will come over um, over the 5G leg. That's how we have increased our uh, 5G uh, coverage footprint uh, effectively by using, uh, by utilizing the NSA architecture because in NSA architecture we have dual connectivity between 5G and LTE. So what we can do is that we can use one connection which is the 5G connection for downlink and the other connection which is the LTE connection which is more robust because it has a much bigger coverage we can use it for uplink and in that case we can maintain the connection for a much much longer time and once we reach out of this portion then both downlink and uplink will move back to LTE and we will be shifted back to LTE so we will leave the 5G service so I hope th this is a, a pretty uh, a small technique but it is a very important technique to increase our 5G coverage and uh, uh, it is uh, something that we should always uh, be looking forward to to increase 5G coverage and it's a simple technique that is supported by all the implementations so hopefully that will help in understanding how we can expand 5G coverage using this technique have a nice day thank you so much